In this video, we'll see some examples of how to answer questions about a function given its graph. So here's the graph we're going to be working with. This is y equals f of x, and we've got a lot of points given to us, and uh, we're going to use those to answer some questions. So the first question is, on which intervals is f increasing? So let's see if we can highlight the places on this graph where the function is actually increasing. So we can see that the function is increasing from this point down here all the way up to this point up here, and then again from this point all the way up to this point, and then finally from this point all the way up to this arrow. Now that arrow there means that the function is going on in that direction forever. So we can safely assume that the function is going to be increasing in that direction forever. So we've identified where the function is increasing, but what about the intervals? Well, when we talk about the intervals on which the function is increasing, we're always talking about x values. So the function is increasing from x equals negative 8 to x equals negative 2. And using our interval notation, we'll write that as parentheses negative 8 comma negative 2. And then the function is also increasing from x equals 0 to x equals 2. Remember, these uh, pairs of numbers that I'm writing down, these are not points, these are intervals. So the interval from negative 8 to negative 2, from 0 to positive 2. It can be confusing when we've got the parentheses with a comma meaning two different things here. But these ones that I'm writing here in the purple ink are intervals. And then our third interval is from 5 to infinity. And if we want to take all those together and to write it into one solution, we can just put a union sign in between each of those intervals. So that is our answer. Okay, next question. Now, on which intervals is f decreasing? Well, we can see that our function is decreasing all the way up to x equals negative 8, and then it's decreasing between negative 2 and 0, and then on the third interval, it's in decreasing from 2 to 5. So our answer here is that the function is decreasing from minus infinity up to negative 8. Again, we're always referring to x values here. And then it's decreasing again from x equals negative 2 to x equals 0. And then one more time from x equals 2 to x equals 5. If we want to put those all together into one big set, we put unions in between. And there is our answer. Next question. At which number or numbers does f have a local maximum? Remember that a local maximum is a point at which the y value is the biggest y value in the neighborhood. It doesn't have to be the biggest y value ever, but it has to be the biggest y value in the local neighborhood that we're talking about. So visually what you're looking for on the graph is you're looking for a peak. You're looking for a high point on the graph. And we see one high point here at negative 2 comma 6, and we see another high point up here at 2 comma 10. So when we say at which numbers, once again, we're referring to the x values. So the answer to our question would be x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. We're not referring to the y values. The y values help us figure out where the local maxima are, but the answer to the question is the x values of those points. So we're looking at two, negative 2 and positive 2. Similar to the last question, at which numbers does f have a local minimum? So now instead of looking for a peak, we're looking for a valley. We're looking for a place where the y value is the lowest y value in the neighborhood. And we can see that that happens here at negative 8 comma negative 4, here at 0 comma 0, and here at 5 comma 0. So this function has three local minima, and they occur at x equals negative 8, x equals 0, and x equals 5. And that's our answer. One more question. This one asks about the average rate of change. So what we want to know is what's the average rate of change from this point, negative 5 comma 0, to this point, 2 comma 10. From x equals negative 5 to x equals 2, what's the average rate of change? Well, remember our formula for average rate of change. It's f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And it doesn't matter which point you call a and which point you call b as long as you are consistent in your naming. So if we call x equals negative 5, if we call that b, then on the top of my fraction, I'm going to have negative 5 written first also. So as long as I'm consistent in calling b negative 5, I'm going to be okay. 
and then that means that a has to be 2. I didn't have to pick the names that way. If I'd picked them the other way, I still would have gotten the right answer. All right, so on the bottom of my fraction, I have negative 7. What do I have on the top of my fraction? So what's f of negative 5? Well, f of negative 5 is the y value when x equals negative 5. When x equals negative 5, y is 0. What about f of 2? Well, f of 2 is the y value when x equals 2. And when x equals 2, y equals 10. 0 minus 10 is negative 10. So we get negative 10 divided by negative 7, also known as 10 over 7. And that is our answer.